Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to give you all a bit of an update on the five piece French wardrobe challenge that I've been doing. I'm halfway through so I've gone through just over three months now of doing this challenge and the main purpose of it is that you only buy five key pieces over six months which is two seasons and so for me that's autumn winter and I guess the real purpose is that you want to build a really high quality wardrobe. You want to have those really beautiful foundation pieces which you know you're going to hold on and treasure for a very long time. Now if you want to learn a little bit more about the challenge I do actually have a video where I discuss the challenge in much more detail and I'll link that in the down bar just below so have a look down there if you're interested and I'll be linking any other things that I might talk about in this video down there as well. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of an update as to what I've actually purchased and some of the things that I've been doing to perhaps stop myself from shopping or stop myself from looking or adding to the wish list over the last few months as I find that those are the areas where you can really get yourself into a little bit of trouble. So the first thing that I picked up, um, and I actually had it on pre-order from September last year, so I already knew I was going to be buying this, was the Manso Gabrielle bucket bag. And I'll show you guys what it looks like. So it is this beautiful calf leather bag. It's a black leather, it's made in Italy. It's got a ballerina pink lining in the inside, a strap which is adjustable, and it ties here. And you can tighten this as much as you like. The bag also comes with this little clutch which you can put some of your daily necessities into. I've got a bit of Panadol in there. Uh, but this was actually attached to the strap of the bag and I wasn't a big fan of that so I pulled off the strap. I haven't actually used this pouch very much as I just prefer to chuck everything in. And just to kind of just to kind of give you guys an idea of the size, I'm not sure if you can see in there, a little bit of my hair in there, <laughs> typical, but it is quite a reasonably large bag and I can fit my Kindle in there, I can fit my camera, which I'm currently using to film, my wallet, my phone, and a whole bunch of other things as well. So it's actually a really reasonable size and it's great for every day. So I'm so pleased that I waited. I think it took me a good six months to get a hold of this bag and I'm very, very pleased with this purchase. So it was one purchase very well made. The second item that I purchased was a more recent one and they're the Acne Jensen Boots. And these are them here. They're a pebbled green leather, they're a black Chelsea boot, and they have this elasticated portion down the side, a little tab pull at the end, and a very low heel. What I love about these is how practical they are. I had really wanted to buy something from Acne, and the Velocite shilling jacket was on my list. Just completely ridiculous. I live in Sydney. I mean, we did recently have a storm, and that could have been excuse enough to get one, but I needed to bring myself down to reality, and... I managed to score these on eBay actually, brand new, for quite a good price, so I was very, very happy with that. Um, for me, I didn't own any black leather boots. I have plenty of suede shoes, but they're not very practical when it's raining, so for me, these are going to be my everyday wet weather wear boots, and I'm so pleased with them. I can wear them in the office, and I can also wear them on the weekend, and they've been so comfortable as well, just from the first moment that I tried them on. Sorry, Charlotte's just come up to say hi. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see she's gotten a bit bigger since she was in my last video. I'm not sure that she likes the lights too much. <laughs> now, the next item that I picked up is from Karen Walker, and I haven't actually received it yet, the time that I'm filming this, but I will insert a clip of me wearing it because I should receive it before this goes up. And it's kind of a floral smock top with loose sleeves, and I really like the fabric. It's got two ruffles at the bottom um, and I'll try and set a clip of me also wearing a photograph if I don't get it in time to shoot it but I really liked the colour, I like the print, I like the fabric and I thought it would be a really interesting piece to have in my wardrobe for the summertime. I don't see myself wearing it too much over autumn and winter just because it is short sleeved and it's colourful but you never know and it's one of those things that I sort of feel like it's good to have in there. 
In terms of the other pieces that I'm purchasing, I did actually end up with a pair of Nicholas Kirkwood heels, but they sent me the black leather ones as opposed to the black suede. I know leather and suede, you're thinking what's the big deal, but for me, I had my heart set on the suede ones, so I sent them back, and I've since decided that I might just settle for the moment and get a nice pair from Tony Bianco or something like that and just save my pennies there and look at investing in something else. Oh my gosh. Go down. Go down. She likes to sit on my shoulder. <laughs> um, in terms of trying to avoid shopping, I have just stopped going to the shops completely and I found that that's really helped. The few times I have been to the shops, I've seen so many pretty things, like going into Debbie Jones especially, I see the Sandro area and I just want to pick up one of everything because it's such a good collection. Then I go and look at Dion Lee and Josh Gu and it's kind of the same thing. So I'm, I've just really tried to avoid doing that because I found that when I don't look, I don't know what's out there and I don't want to buy it. The other thing is I've kept a really stringent wish list so I know exactly what it is that I want to purchase and those are the things that I've been looking out for. So when I'm online shopping, the occasional times that I have looked, I'm looking for these very particular things. The other thing I haven't really done much of is actually purchasing any basics. I've kind of found that all the items that I have have just worked really well. I'm also doing Project 333, which I'll link down below, and that has been another thing that's really helped me to stop shopping because I know those are the only items I'm going to be wearing for the next three months. Well, for me, it's until the end of May. So I found that with doing that challenge, I'm not really... I'm not really feeling that desire to go out and buy new things because I'm not going to be able to wear them for such a long time so there's very little point. The other thing to mention is I'm not sure that I'm going to be buying something from Lover this season because I did buy something from Lover but it's not related to my capsule, it's actually my wedding dress. So <laughs> I didn't really want to include that in my five, I didn't think it was right, it's, a, it's not an everyday piece, it's obviously a very very special occasion piece. So. I'm, I'm not really thinking that I'm going to add anything else from Lover this season. I might look to add something from their spring summer collection instead in a few months time. One of the things that I did very early on was I unsubscribed from all of the different websites that I was receiving newsletters for. So these were websites like Shopbop, Revolve, Netaporter, The Artnet, all of them. Because I found that the more newsletters that I received, the more likely I was to open them up, click on the links and go and buy something. And as soon as you see the word sale, you think, I want to get a bargain. Well, okay, that's what I think. But maybe, maybe you don't think the same way, but I'm thinking, 70% off an $800 pair of shoes, I'm saving money when really you're not because you wouldn't have bought them in the first place. But I think you get where I'm going with that. So I found that that has really helped because it's really reduced the temptation. And again, it's the same thing as not going looking in the shops. If you don't know what's out there, you don't want it. The other thing that I've really been doing is shopping my wardrobe. And I suppose that is just... So cliche to say, go and shop your wardrobe, go and just wear what you have and remix it, but it's the truth. As soon as you start looking at everything that you have and going, okay, well, this is what I've got, how am I going to make it work, then I think you see it in a different light and you have a completely different outlook towards your wardrobe and to the items that you own. The other thing is, I don't really want to add too much more to my wardrobe. We do have quite a bit of cupboard space here, but I've already taken over so much of it and I don't even have that much stuff. So I don't really want to end up with too many more things in case we end up moving again. So that's my update on the five piece French wardrobe challenge. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video and have found this a little bit insightful. I am hoping to put together a series of blog posts on culling your wardrobe, wish listing, and how to stay away from the shops while you're on a shopping ban of sorts on my blog Mademoiselle and I'm going to link that down below if you would like to subscribe and get updates. Well, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Bye.